Hi, my name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ. I am addicted to sugar, flour, and binging. And this was going to be my day in the life of a Bright Line Eater. But no, this is my, um, and I actually made this because I needed you guys to go with me. So forget the whole day. Um, you're not going to see breakfast or dinner. They're bright, I promise. I put them in my refrigerator last night. But this video is, please come out to not eat with me. I need your moral support. Good morning. So happy Sunday morning. There are four kids out in the car, one in the bathroom. My husband's out in the car. I need to get out there. We are headed to church and there is big talk about Mexican food after church. Two, my two teenage sons came to me separately and said, hey, could we go to uh, um, our little small town? Awesome, delicious Mexican restaurant. And so anyways, I'm taking you guys with me today. This is going to be a day in the life of a Bright Line Eater and a day in the life of a Bright Line Eater that is committed to finishing January 31st, excuse me, January strong by eating only and exactly what I wrote down the night before. So this is my lunch, not Mexican food. Um, Starting tomorrow, I made myself five little coupons where I could make five little swaps. So like today could be a perfect opportunity or something like today could be where I swap out that for, um, you know, some grilled chicken, vegetables, and a little avocado at a Mexican restaurant. But nope, not today, not today. I'm going to finish strong. I'm going to eat that. Now here's what's funny. I have lost so much weight. People are kind of like, whoa. And um, some people are kind of like, you're not, a, you're unrecognizable or are you done losing yet? Like, oh my gosh, like they're kind of like, I'm starting to get questioned a little bit. So it is going to be funny to be at the Mexican restaurant where we have not been in months. And then when they ask me what I want, I'm just going to be like, nothing for me, thanks. That is going to be kind of funny. Um, making it look like I just don't eat anymore, which is not true. I eat good. It's here. It's in the refrigerator and I'm committing to eating. I'm committed to eating it um, because it is what I wrote down last night. All right. There's Thomas. You ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Bye. Come with me, please. I need the moral support. Okay, I was grabbing some pictures of those puppies and one of them tripped me. One of those dogs tripped me and I, and I went down. But it's okay, I recovered. Let's go to church. Okay, that was um, selfies in the church bathroom. That was sort of embarrassing. And I thought, oh my gosh, if somebody walked in, I'd be so embarrassed. And then I thought, there might be someone waiting outside to use this bathroom. Anyways, oh well, you gotta take those selfies when you can, when you got those good angles, that good lighting. Okay, we are headed to the Mexican restaurant. You guys are going with me. And Susan Pierce Thompson, like she says, I love in her vlog. Um, sometimes the easiest, the simplest thing to eat. She has a vlog, a weekly vlog called The Simplest Thing to Eat or The Easiest Thing to Eat something like that and I'm gonna spoil it for you if you haven't seen it hey Mary hold on just a second um, the easiest thing to eat sometimes the simplest thing to eat sometimes is nothing so that's what I'm about to do I'm gonna stick with my January commitment to eat only in exactly what I wrote down the night before and um, also I weigh on February 2nd that's like two days from now so um, I want to I want to stay strong and um, get some good data February 2nd Tuesday morning um, it helps that I just had about 10 sweet ladies freak out about my weight loss and ask me what are you doing oh my gosh one woman said you have lost a person and I have I've lost one of those Franklin say hi Hello. look up your wave I've lost a third grade <laughs> boy that's about how much I've lost all right let's go not eat lunch Okay, my family's at that Mexican restaurant. We walked in, got our table, everybody started sitting down. They brought chips and I thought, oh, this is gonna be harder than I was thinking. Even with your support, even with my motivation, even with blah, blah, blah. Um, 
our brains make very strong associations with things. And I thought I cannot sit there with ice water with a bunch of lemon in it and enjoy my time with my family. I've got to run over here, get a cup of hot decaf coffee that will be enjoyable for me to um, sip on. It'll be hot. It'll hit my stomach differently than the ice water would. Um, and something about the heat in my stomach almost makes my stomach feel like it's like shrinking up instead of like, okay, I'm ready for whatever you're going to feed me. Um, let's let this water wash it all down. Like I, it's like food goes with water. I don't know. Decaf goes with like just sipping and chatting and enjoying the company around me. And um, anyways, strong associations. So I have overeaten many, 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 many times at that exact restaurant. And um, my brain, I walked in and was like, oh, I refuse to sit here and be miserable for an hour with this amazing family of mine on this beautiful day that the, that the Lord has given us um, after a lovely um, opportunity to meet with my brothers and sisters in Christ at our Methodist church down the road. I refuse to sit there and whine internally way on the inside and um, think about all I, that I don't have. I don't have refried beans or chicken or cheese dip. That white cheese dip. Am I right? Um, no, I'm not going to sit there and pout. That's not what I'm going to do. I have way too much to celebrate and be excited about. And this is like Paul says, a thorn in my flesh that, um, you know, I, uh, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for, um, the issues that I have the issues that I have to work my way through, not around. Um, it's all good for me. And, um, oh my goodness, like I've said before, if we all put our problems in a big pile, we'd be real quick to grab ours right back out. I'm grateful for um, uh, the types of problems that I have, which are nothing compared to a lot of people. I mean, there's something, they're significant, but you get my point. And again, back to serious associations. Um, I know you'll know what I mean. Uh, when I hear Mexican Hispanic type music, if I hear it, which isn't often, you know, in my, like, I don't know where I would hear it other than a Mexican restaurant, but let's say I'm not in a Mexican restaurant and I hear it. I instantly want salsa instantly. I want chips and salsa. I'm like, Ooh, I hear that music. Give me some chips and salsa. Our brains make very powerful associations. And um, so I am going to create some new associations. I'm gonna get me a cup of decaf, get back there with my husband. I raced out the door, I said, give me the keys, I gotta go get decaf, oh my gosh. And I said, um, the girls want chicken burritos. Like I helped him order. Um, he probably would like, like a little bit more help than that. So I'm gonna get back to my family. I love you guys, here I go. Okay, so now my family can indulge. They can just go to town. They can live it up. They can have a blast eating all that chips and salsa and everything else. Um, while I indulge on my hot decaf coffee, which is basically hot black water. Yay. Okay, one more thing. Right when I walked in the Mexican restaurant, this woman stopped me and she was like, Hey, did I just see you at church? And I said, which church? And she said, the Baptist church. I said, no. So anyways... People are not recognizing me and they are thinking I'm other people. <laughs> um, I tell people, if you see my husband and my kids, those are, use context clues. Use context clues, you can figure it out. You can, you can finally figure it out that um, it's me, it's me. And I should mention that the woman that thought I was someone else entirely knows me. Well, she didn't recognize me. She used to coach my son's basketball team. So I waved to her like, hi. And she waved to me like, oh, hi. Thinking I was someone else. You guys, this is kind of hilarious. It's, um, this is an odd thing to be experiencing. Fun though. And I'm over worrying about what people think. I, um, I got my eye on the prize. Let's do this. Let's, um, get to go wait and, uh, people can get to know the new me. Okay, entering the Mexican restaurant, take two.
Okay, that could not have gone better. That went so great. We're sitting here waiting to pay now. But, um, I mean, I thought it was gonna be awkward not ordering anything, but these people that own this place know me and they were so sweet and complimentary of my weight loss and even took my coffee and heated it up for me again. So nice. Um, also, a lady just now, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, so that place is packed now because of the after church crowd. And right when we were leaving, a lady yelled from across the whole restaurant at me. She said, girl, what happened to the other half of you? Where did it go? And I said, I don't know, but I don't want to find it. It's gone. Okay, we did it. And this is piping hot. I'm going to enjoy it the whole way home. I'm going to enjoy it when I go home and help these girls get back into some play clothes. And then I'm looking forward to my lunch. My um, cauliflower and corn and peanuts and a cutie, yum. Um, I want to point out again that this is a gift we've been given. This is, I'll, I'll speak for myself, this is a gift I've been given that I don't want to take for granted. I just ran into several people again um, since this pandemic that have gained quite a bit of weight. And I know, I know for sure they were trying to lose weight beforehand because they were right there with me in this battle, always trying to lose weight. Um, in fact, one, one girl, I just listened to her as she was ordering her to-go order, and she said, and let me have sodas, and she just held her hands up like this, and she said, whatever's the biggest size you have. So, um, and at church, when I was sharing this with people, a woman that's um, going through some cancer treatments, she said sugar really never um, interested her much before, but now her body's like craving it like crazy. And she just said, I can relate. She said, I, I open jelly beans and eat them like I inhale them. And I said, exactly. Like you, you, you almost don't want to take the time to chew and swallow. You're, you're like shaky and you want, you want the sugar in your system quickly. So, um, you know, people, when I share, when I tell them, you know, they say, what are you doing to lose weight? I say, I'm doing bright line eating. There's four bright lines. And I said, it's for sugar and food addiction. I go to celebrate recovery for it. And I, I tell them I got myself accidentally and highly addicted to um, sugar and um, and food and flour in general but um, um, this is very real and um, my heart goes out to people when I look around and just I can see I can see the struggle so it's all the more motivating for me to be um, an example of um, of victory victory over over this addiction and all the glory go, goes to God because um, it's in my weakness that his strength is shown second Corinthians 12 9 which is the celebrate recovery verse um, Charlie you're in this video and um, uh, I claim no victory over this this is the fruit of the Spirit and the final fruit of the Spirit is self-control and I am just so glad to have handed over control to him and um, and it's uh, Charlie stop doing that what is in your mouth Okay, don't do that, especially in my video. Just feeling grateful, just feeling grateful. And um, anyways, got my coffee, headed home, gonna enjoy some lunch. And um, thanks for going on this trip with me. This feels annoying. Teeny tiny, brand new baby lambs. They're so itty bitty. Is there a sheep belly out there with him? I won't see one. You guys, I'm home free. I am home free. I'm so happy. Time to walk in that house. Start getting backpacks, laundry. I call it my Sunday freak out. I start freaking out. <laughs> I start freaking out on Sundays, getting everybody ready for Mondays. Um, but anyways, I'm home. Time for me to get to eat some lunch. Yay! Still have my decaf. And by the way, this was perfect. Um, Psychology 101 conditioning. We condition our brains. Um, and you know what? Companies companies rely on it. They rely on the conditioning. They rely on us getting um, subconsciously hooked or subconsciously associating one thing with another. So when you go to the movie theater, you're like, what? I should be eating popcorn, right? Um, that's just a random arbitrary thing that we've been conditioned to do. That'd be sort of like, um, you know, every time I 
went to the doctor's office, I ate grapes on the way there. If I did that my whole life, if my mom fed me grapes every single time on our way to the pediatrician, I'd probably never question it. I'd probably just do it thinking there must be some reason for it. Anyways, you get my point. It's conditioning. And I am definitely conditioned at the Mexican restaurant um, to want chips and salsa and cheese and guacamole and the whole list of things along with my ice water and lemon, which is why as soon as I got there, I thought, oh, I can't have ice water and lemon because... I know what all I typically use this water to wash down. So the decaf was a fantastic way to break that uh, that association for me. Now I can start to associate Mexican restaurants with a little cup of decaf. Um, and you know what? I might let myself go in there sometime and do the chicken and the veggies and this and that. But I mean, again, like I said the other day on my video, how wonderful when the cons finally outweigh the pros, you know, I, um, I don't know that I'd even, this was almost more enjoyable to me to just sit there with my family than to eat all that and be like staring down their meals. Like I want a tortilla and I want chips and I want rice and I want, 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 want. Um, it sort of becomes like a, an annoying tease instead of, um, a meal that I, I should be very grateful for, right? These are first world problems. All right, let's go eat. Come with me while I eat my lunch. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. I'm home. I am about to enjoy every crumb and calorie of my lunch that I had prepared for me um, yesterday. I'm going to eat it and fuel up and um, get to work because um, Sunday is the first day of the week and there is work to be done and my work is cut out for me and I'm excited to tackle it. Um, I have some new laundry systems in place around here and I'm excited to see them in action. I'm determined one of these days I'm gonna get laundry figured out. Um, okay, so I can't get a good snap. There's, ooh, that was, I'm gonna end on that one. Um, a sweet friend of mine texted me. She's going through a rough time after church and she said, oh, and by the way, you look beautiful and happy. I'm gonna show you that. And then my response to her was, Thank you so much. And it's been a rough road getting here and it has, but, um, a lady I used to work with had a little post-it note on her, on her computer. And you know, when I talk about people that have problems that we wouldn't want to have this woman, um, the testimony that she has, the ways in which God uses her, I swear is to show us that, um, even through loss, we can praise him. And even through tragedy, we can praise him. And this woman, oh my goodness, the loss in her life and the way she just sang his praises and um, John 35 11 it's the shortest verse in the Bible and it's one of my very favorite verses it just says Jesus wept people say how could God allow this pain in our lives um, well again he's not controlling all of this we get to make choices and the choices stemming from Adam and Eve um, mean that this is a broken fallen world and Jesus wept when his friend Lazarus died he wept and when we are suffering and we're going through pain he is weeping with us he wants to be with us he wants to comfort us through this pain and help it um, help help keep our chin lifted help keep our eyes fixed on him knowing that we are not home yet this is um, this is this is a temporary flash in the pan this ex this experience here on earth and um, we have much to look forward to eternity with him um, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior and um, have the privilege of being called a child of God. So anyways, um, my response to her was, it's been rough. But like that woman that, that I used to work with, she had a little post-it note that said, if he brings you to it, he will bring you through it. If he brings you to it, he will bring you through it. And I love that because it does not say if he brings you to it, he will skirt you around it or he'll help you jump over it or he'll find a way to tunnel beneath it we walk through it and he walks with us like the footprints prayer um he walks beside us he carries us sometimes i have felt like he let me see if i could just drug me through a couple things i'm like no 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 not more not more um but everything i've ever been through with him is um something i'm very very grateful for for second corinthians 1 4 that um, the comfort that we have received, we can use to comfort others, which was my response to her that thank you so much for the compliment of saying that I look beautiful and happy and what a rough road it's been getting here. But the roughness, um, the roughness 
is um, led to the sweetness and it is oh so sweet to be here with you. Thanks again for traveling alongside. Today I am going to, let's see here. Eat some lunch, fuel up, and get to work. Happy, happy Sunday. Y'all have a great week. Bye. P.S. Um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want it to be lost on me that I did not have to cook lunch. I did not have to make lunch. I do not have a bunch of dishes to take care of. Um, so that was a treat, even though I did not take part in the eating and the chewing and the Mexican food, which guys, do I not mention Mexican food in every other video? You all know this is a big deal for me. But um, how wonderful, I just, I just wanted to point out, I wanted to point out, it's worth pointing out on here that um, that was a treat for me to just sit there and have other people feed my family and then clean up afterwards. Um, so again, I'm going to eat my lunch and get rolling, but this has been a very positive experience. Thanks for experiencing it with me. Bye. We'll talk again sometime soon. Bye. <clears throat> PPS. So I was just listening to my my video, getting ready to send it out there, um, doing a couple final little edits, um, and it got me thinking about two songs, Building 429, the song called Where I Belong, and Stephen Curtis Chapman, Not Home Yet. So look down below, I'm going to link both of those songs. Um, for you to enjoy. I will enjoy them as well while I fold laundry and put dishes away and whatnot. But um, there, especially if you weren't able to get out to church, maybe that's a little church for you, a little worship on this beautiful Sunday. I love you guys. Thanks again for traveling alongside. You are not alone and we are not home yet. Love you. Bye.